Ever wondered what really makes your computer think? From scrolling through social media to solving the mysteries of the universe, it all boils down to raw processing power. But what if I told you that not all processing power is created equal? Today we're diving deep into the heart of modern computing, the classic processor versus the rising star, the accelerator. You might think they do the same thing, but as we'll discover, their fundamental differences are shaping the future of technology, from your smartphone to cutting-edge AI. Get ready to understand what makes them tick, where they shine, and why they're both absolutely essential. Let's start with the workhorse we're all familiar with, the Central Processing Unit, or CPU. Think of the CPU as the Swiss Army knife of computing. It's designed to be incredibly versatile, capable of handling a vast range of tasks. At its core, a CPU excels at sequential processing. It takes instructions one after another, executes them, and moves on. Each core within a CPU is like a highly intelligent general-purpose worker. It can fetch data, perform arithmetic, make logical decisions, and manage input and output. This generalist approach makes it perfect for running your operating system, browsing the web, typing documents, basically, anything that requires flexibility and complex decision-making. CPUs are optimized for low-latency operations. This basically means they're designed to complete individual tasks really quickly. They have these complex control units, branch prediction capabilities, and pretty large caches to keep frequently accessed data close by. All of this sophistication makes them incredibly powerful for tasks that involve a lot of unpredictable jumps in execution or depend heavily on the results of previous steps. So, the CPU's strengths are its incredible versatility, its robust handling of complex control flow, and its excellent performance on tasks that are inherently sequential. It's really the brain of your computer, coordinating everything. However, the CPU's general-purpose nature comes with a limitation, especially when facing a specific type of problem. Imagine you need to perform the same simple calculation on millions of pieces of data simultaneously. A CPU with its relatively few but very powerful cores would have to process these one by one, or in small batches. It's kind of like having a few incredibly skilled surgeons trying to dig a very long trench. They're precise but not built for sheer repetitive brute force and, well, this is where accelerators come into play. Accelerators, as the name suggests, are hardware components designed to accelerate specific types of computations. Unlike the CPU, they are not generalists. They are highly specialized tools, built from the ground up to excel at a narrow range of tasks, but to do those tasks with just unparalleled efficiency and speed. Think of the CPU as the project manager, overseeing the entire operation. When it encounters a particularly intensive repetitive task that aligns with an accelerator's expertise, it offloads that work. The accelerator crunches the numbers and then sends the results back to the CPU to continue with the overall process. This division of labor is honestly incredibly powerful. The most common and widely recognized accelerator today is the Graphics Processing Unit, or GPU. Originally designed to render complex three-dimensional graphics, think about how many individual pixels need to be calculated and colored on your screen. Every fraction of a second, GPUs have evolved into general-purpose parallel processors. A GPU isn't about having a few super-powerful cores. Instead, it has hundreds or even thousands of smaller, simpler processing units. These units aren't as smart or versatile as a CPU core, but they are incredibly efficient at performing the same operation simultaneously on massive amounts of data. This is called, uh, massively parallel processing. So, this architecture, it really makes GPUs phenomenal for tasks like video rendering and editing, where they're processing millions of pixels and frames. They're also great for scientific simulations, running identical calculations across vast data sets. And, of course, cryptocurrency mining, which involves performing these repetitive hashing algorithms. But most significantly, GPUs absolutely excel in artificial intelligence and machine learning, since training neural networks involves billions of identical matrix multiplications. 
While GPUs are dominant, they're not the only game in town. Other accelerators exist for even more specialized needs. First, we have FPGAs that stands for Field Programmable Gate Arrays. Imagine a blank canvas of digital logic gates that you can reconfigure, even after the chip has been manufactured. FPGAs offer this really unique blend of flexibility and performance. You can program them to perform a specific task with extreme efficiency, basically custom tailoring their internal circuitry. This makes them ideal for applications where the algorithms might evolve or where you need very specific, low-latency hardware acceleration like in telecommunications, industrial control, or custom data center applications. Then there are ASICs application-specific integrated circuits. These are, honestly, the ultimate specialists. An ASIC is a chip designed and manufactured from scratch for one specific purpose. Once it's made, its function is fixed in hardware. This means they're incredibly power efficient and blazingly fast for that single task since there's no overhead for programmability. Just think of the chips inside your smartphone that handle specific camera processing or those specialized Bitcoin mining chips that were custom built to do only Bitcoin hashing. ASICs or application-specific integrated circuits offer the highest performance and efficiency for a given task, but, you know, that comes at a pretty high development cost and, honestly, with no flexibility once they're created. They're really the epitome of specialization. So, if accelerators are so fast for specific tasks, why don't we just build computers entirely out of them? Well, the answer lies in their complementary nature. Modern computing isn't about one replacing the other, it's really about intelligent collaboration. The CPU remains the brain, managing the operating system running general applications handling user input and orchestrating the entire system. When a computationally intensive parallelizable task comes along, like training an AI model, the CPU offloads that task to the GPU. The GPU crunches the numbers at lightning speed and then returns the results to the CPU, which integrates them back into the larger program. Consider a modern video game. The CPU handles the game's AI, physics calculations, user input, and overall game logic. Meanwhile, the GPU is dedicated to rendering the complex three-dimensional environments, characters, and special effects, putting literally millions of pixels on your screen every single second. Without both, the immersive experience just wouldn't be possible. The increasing reliance on accelerators isn't accidental. It's actually driven by some fundamental shifts in how we use computers these days. First, there's the data explosion. We're generating, processing, and analyzing more data than ever before. And a lot of this data processing involves highly parallel operations. Then, there's the AI revolution. Machine learning algorithms really thrive on massive data sets and parallel matrix multiplications, which makes GPUs totally indispensable for AI training and more and more for inference too. In scientific discovery, from climate modeling to drug discovery, complex simulations need immense computational power that parallel architectures provide. And of course, let's not forget the end of Moore's law as we knew it. While transistors keep shrinking, the traditional gains in CPU clock speed and single-core performance are definitely slowing down. So specialization is becoming a primary way to achieve performance gains. Let's look at some real-world examples where accelerators are making a monumental impact. In AI and machine learning, they're powering things like self-driving cars, medical imaging analysis, natural language processing, and recommendation engines. When it comes to scientific computing, they're behind weather prediction models, protein folding simulations, and astrophysics research. For data analytics, accelerators enable real-time fraud detection and financial modeling. In gaming and virtual reality, they make high-fidelity graphics and immersive experiences possible. And finally, in custom enterprise solutions, accelerators are optimizing databases and enhancing network security. Artificial intelligence and machine learning, this is, uh, probably the most prominent area. Training a large language model like the one I'm running on would honestly take years if not decades if you were just using a CPU. But GPUs, they slash that time down to days or maybe weeks. And for AI inference where the trained model actually makes predictions, specialized accelerators like Google's TPUs, that stands for Tensor Processing Units, which are ASICs, are designed for 
maximum efficiency. Scientific research is another huge area. From simulating the fusion reactions in a tokamak to modeling the really complex interactions of molecules for new drug development, supercomputers rely pretty heavily on clusters of GPUs and other accelerators to get the throughput they need. Data centers and cloud computing have totally changed the game. Hyperscale cloud providers like AWS, Google Cloud and Microsoft Azure offer instances loaded with GPUs and other accelerators. This lets anyone tap into massive computing power for their specific workloads without ever needing to build their own supercomputer. Autonomous vehicles, you know, really depend on the real-time processing of sensor data from cameras, LiDAR and radar. All the complex decision-making that's needed for self-driving actually relies pretty heavily on specialized AI accelerators that are embedded right inside the vehicle. Even your smartphone, believe it or not, uses dedicated chips for image processing neural engines, often custom ASICs for AI inference, and graphics rendering. All these work alongside the main mobile CPU to deliver those rich experiences that we've all come to expect. So, what does this mean for the future? Well, we're moving deeper into an era of heterogeneous computing. It's not really about one chip to rule them all, but more about intelligently integrating different types of processing units onto a single chip, or even within a single system. Companies like Apple with their M-series chips are pioneers in this. They tightly integrate CPU cores, GPU cores, and dedicated neural engines, those are AI accelerators, into a single system on a chip, or SOC. This setup allows for incredibly efficient data transfer between all these components, minimizing bottlenecks and honestly, just maximizing performance for all sorts of workloads. We're going to see more specialized accelerators emerging for even more niche tasks. Maybe for specific encryption algorithms, video encoding, or even, you know, quantum computing control. The goal is always the same, to find the most efficient hardware for the specific computational problem at hand. Of course, this specialized approach isn't without its challenges. Writing software that efficiently utilizes these diverse hardware architectures can be significantly more complex than programming for a general-purpose CPU. Developers need specialized tools and knowledge. Designing and manufacturing custom ASICs or even large-scale FPGAs can be incredibly expensive. And while accelerators are more power-efficient for their specific tasks, the sheer scale of computation they enable can still lead to significant energy demands, especially in data centers. Balancing these factors, performance, power, cost, and programmability, is the ongoing challenge for computer architects and engineers. So, to recap the CPU is your versatile general-purpose processor, the brain handling a wide range of tasks, sequentially and efficiently. It's the master coordinator. Accelerators like GPUs, FPGAs, and ASICs are specialized coprocessors designed for massive parallelism and unparalleled efficiency on specific types of computations. They are the highly skilled laborers. Neither is inherently better than the other. They are different tools for different jobs. The magic happens when they work together in a symphony of silicon, each contributing its unique strengths to solve the complex problems of our modern world. From the AI powering our recommendations, to the simulations predicting our weather, to the immersive worlds of our favorite games, the relentless pursuit of computational efficiency through this CPU Accelerator partnership is what drives innovation forward. Understanding this fundamental distinction isn't just for engineers, it's key to appreciating the incredible complexity and power of the technology that surrounds us every single day. What are your thoughts on the future of computing? Do you think we'll see even more specialized accelerators? Or will integration become the dominant trend? Let me know in the comments below. If you found this deep dive insightful, please hit that like button, share this video, and subscribe for more explorations into the fascinating world of technology. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.